Today we're going to continue our discussion of intermolecular forces. These are the weak forces between molecules. So uh, yesterday we discussed the strongest of these weak forces, hydrogen bonding forces, and today we're going to look at even weaker weak forces. One of these we've already talked about. It's the polar forces between molecules. We can tell when a molecule is polar by whether or not it's lopsided, if one end is more electronegative than the other end. This depends partly on the shape of the molecule and partly on the atoms that make it up. If it is polar, then one end is slightly negative while the other end is slightly positive. This is not like an ionic crystal lattice where the charges are pretty strong, you know, like maybe minus 1 and plus 1. This is like minus 0.05 maybe and plus 0.05. They're pretty weak charges. So while the molecules will stick together uh, because like charges repel and opposite charges attract, it's not a real strong force. The very weakest of the weak intermolecular forces are called London dispersion forces. This is kind of like a temporary dipole. If you have a molecule just sitting by itself, its little electrons are moving around all the time. And for just a split second, you may have more electrons over on the right-hand side than on the left. And so you'll have one end being negative and one end being positive. That's a dipole, two poles. And, you know, normally the electrons would just move back and this dipole is shifting around all the time and it doesn't mean much. It's just the random movement of electrons. But if this molecule happened to be next to another molecule during this, once these electrons move over here, it's going to repel electrons here, and all the electrons in the bottom molecule will move to the left. And then, because these electrons are over here, the electrons would normally move back over there aren't going to. They're going to be stuck over here, repelled by these. And so these two molecules become kind of stuck in this position. So the opposites will attract and the two molecules will stick to each other and the temporary dipoles will become momentarily permanent as long as the molecules stay right next to each other. As soon as the molecules separate though, these dipoles are going to disappear. So these dipoles are not going to attract molecules towards each other from any distance. A real dipole in a polar molecule would act over a distance to attract uh, other molecules, but not these. As soon as you separate them a little bit, these temporary dipoles disappear and the two molecules are not attracted to each other. So it's a pretty weak force. However, London dispersion forces, I'm going to call them LD for short because it's such a long term, can get pretty big if you have a big molecule. So if you have something like cooking oil, it's a huge molecule and two of them are next to each other, you're going to get all these positives and negatives stuck in position, and this thing is going to be like zipped together. These two molecules are going to have a hard time separating. So while London dispersion forces are generally weaker than polar and hydrogen bonding forces, they can get stronger if it's a really big molecule. In fact, Geckos use London dispersion forces to stick to the ceiling. They have a really large surface area on their little toes, which increases the London forces between their toes and the ceiling so that they can hang on to it. It will hold its weight. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, let's sort of put all of our new knowledge together and look at a whole bunch of compounds and see if we can tell which ones will be harder to boil or melt. So of all of these compounds, which one would be hardest to melt? Think about it and go on when you're ready. Well, if you look at all these compounds, these green ones are covalently bonded. The red one is a metal and the blue one is ionic. And the ionic compound is definitely going to be the hardest to melt of all of these compounds. Which would be the second hardest to melt? Well, I hope you said that the red one, the metal, would be the second hardest to melt. 
And that just leaves all these green ones, which are covalently bonded molecules. You can tell because there are no metals in any of these compounds. So they're covalently bonded. So intermolecular forces are what's going to hold them into the solid phase. So which of these is going to have the strongest intermolecular forces? Which one of these green ones will be the hardest to melt? Well, I hope you notice that this compound, methanol, has an OH group in it, which is going to make it the hardest of the green ones to melt. Which one is going to be the second most difficult one to melt? Well, I hope you chose this one with F in it. It's going to be polar. That F is going to pull all the electrons towards it, making this a polar molecule. How about these last two? Which of these is going to be harder to melt? Well, the larger one is going to be harder to melt than the smaller one because the larger one has larger London dispersion forces. Please don't just say, oh, if it's bigger, it's harder to melt, because this is not generally true. Think about water. It's a tiny, tiny molecule, but very hard to melt. You have to say, given that it's not polar and it doesn't have hydrogen bonding forces, the larger one is harder to melt because it has bigger London dispersion forces. Make sure you're quoting some force when you're telling me why something's harder to melt. Let's try a few more of these. Which of these has the higher melting point? Octane or butane? Try to explain your answer as best you can. Go on when you're ready. Well, I hope you chose octane. Both molecules are nonpolar covalent molecules, so they only have London dispersion forces holding them in the solid phase. So the one that is hardest to separate from its neighbors would be the larger one with the larger London dispersion forces. So octane is the one with the higher melting point. It's harder to melt octane. Okay, let's try this one. Who has the higher boiling point, NaOH or CH3OH? Well, this was a little tricky because they both have this OH group in there, but this one is ionic. Sodium is a metal, so the ionic compound is definitely going to have the higher boiling point. This one is a covalent molecule with just weak intermolecular forces.